Now, a few months ago, I fitted those exhaust tips from British Customs and the number plates that replace the side panels. And ever since doing that, it struck me that the bike is just screaming out for some attention at the back end. Don't get me wrong, that large valance period mudguard that's fitted to the back of the T120 is lovely, but as this bike has evolved, to me it started to look out of place and I have had a few requests from people asking me to fit some sort of tail tardy or bobbed rear mudguard. Now I fully agree with the opinion that something needed to be done but I found there was one major sticking point with most of the tail tardies that are on the market and that is in order for them to be fitted it requires complete removal of the grab rail system which means that you not only lose your grab rail but you also lose the facility of fitting a back rack, which for me is a no-go. Now, I fully understand that the whole point of a tail tardy is to do just that, to do away with a lot of the peripherals and tardy the back end of the bike up. But for me personally, that accessory cannot compromise safety and the usability of the bike. I frequently carry a pillion and I know for a fact that that pillion will not get on the bike without the facility of a grab rail. And for me, the bike also needs to be practical, so I need to have a back rack in place. So any tail tidy that I fitted had to work in conjunction with those criteria. So that, as far as I could see, eventually left me with just one option, and that is the tail tidy for the Triumph T120 by RG Racing. Now most tail tardies are just flat plates that bolt on the underside of the rear subframe underneath the seat. And some, it has to be said, don't give adequate protection to the parts of the bike that need to be protected from the elements. Now r and I believe, have created and sold over 200 different models of tail tardies for all sorts of bikes and that represents a lot of design knowledge and experience and to that end this particular tail tardy is a curved panel that mimics the original rear mudguard giving complete protection to the underside of the seat and the airbox now this isn't the cheapest tail tardy on the market but in common with a lot of other rng racing products it's made completely from stainless steel, albeit that on this occasion, it's black powder coated. Now there are two options for indicator fitment. One is a conventional fitment, just either side of the rear tail light. And there's also an additional bracket that allows you to move the indicators further forward to just behind the rear shock absorbers for a more vintage look. I decided not to go with this option and stick with the rearward mounting bracket near to the light. In the kit you'll also find a very nice modern LED rear tail light unit, a tail light and number plate bracket and a guard assembly which protects the locking mechanism for the seat. Obviously you also get a huge range of fasteners, washers electrical connectors and some electrical heat shrink sleeves. The instructions consist of 10 separate sheets uh, and a total of about 20 pages of instructions. Now, although they are very comprehensive, I did find these a little bit confusing. One sheet is an exploded diagram with a key that identifies all the parts. You then have some pages of text that relate to the fitting of the tail tardy along with various different options for fitting RNG's own indicator units. And you then have a number of sheets with numbered photographs on them. The problem I found with this is that you are working from three sheets at any one time. So this does slow the fitting process down a little bit while you're trying to digest three different sources of information for each step of the fitting procedure. Now I don't intend to go through a full blow by blow fitting video of how to put this unit on but I thought it might be helpful just to go through the fitting sequences to sort of work in conjunction with RNG's instructions. 
Now my sequence might be slightly different from RNG's instructions but this seemed to make more sense to me after having fitted it. So what I would advise you to do is give the RNG instructions a good read uh, several times before you even start this job and make your own mind up as to how you're going to go about this job. There are also one or two little problems that you might come across that aren't catered for in RNG's instructions so I've got a workaround for those as well. Obviously the first thing you need to do is remove the factory rear fender and the wiring loom. It's quite straightforward, one easy to disconnect wiring connector and four bolts. You won't be reusing the bolts and once you've removed the rear fender remove those metal spacers and the rubber grommets that those bolts sat in and put them somewhere safe. RNG's instructions do actually tell you to do this later on but I don't see any problem in removing them now. Once you've done that Assemble the RNG lighting unit. There's a little plastic shroud in the bag. Put that on, making sure that the LED lights that form the number plate illuminator are facing downwards and not hidden by the cowling. And then fit the light right way up onto the number plate bracket. Then using the little black threaded spacer provided in the kit along with the prescribed fasteners, attach the number plate bracket with light to the rear subframe of the bike, taking note on the diagram with the instructions which way up the fasteners go. Now throughout this procedure and for the rest of the fitting, at this stage only fasten everything up loosely because you may need some jiggle room to get everything to fit. In actual fact I found everything fitted perfectly so really you shouldn't have any problems. Then go around and tighten everything up once the installation is complete. So once you've got your number plate bracket installed it's time to fit the rear indicator bracket if that's the one that you're using. Now this simply sits on top of the lighting and registration plate bracket which is threaded to accept the screws to fasten this down. If you're using the other indicator bracket I'll leave you to sort that out because I didn't fit it. So when that's done it's time to remove the wiring harness from the factory fender. Now the instructions say simply to remove the wiring harness from the factory fender but it's not quite as simple as that. The indicators are just bullet connectors, they're easy enough to take off. But remember, my bike was one of the early models. The wiring for the lighting unit is hard wired in and can't be unplugged. So you're gonna have to cut the wires. Leave yourself at least two inches of wire from your lighting unit so that if you wanna return things back to stock later on, you've got some wire there to play with. It's quite a simple straightforward procedure to reconnect it all up again, uh, just a couple of bullet connectors, it's a two minute job, don't worry about it. I would mention that you are going to need an electrical crimping tool in order to do this job but it's something most of us should have and they're not expensive anyway. And I would say that RNG's kit comes with plenty of spare connectors. Once you've got your wiring harness free, follow their instructions on how to wire their lighting unit up to the harness using the bullet connectors. At this point as well, I would also remove your stock indicators from your factory fender and transfer them to the new brackets that you fitted to your bike. Just a little bit of advice, I know it seems obvious, but if you're like me and you sometimes get a bit confused as to which wire goes where, Take a photograph with your mobile phone before you dismantle your original factory fender so you've got a record of the colours of the wires and what they relate to. Then if you do get confused while you're refitting it, you've got something to refer to. Now to my mind, now is a very good time to do a test fit of your harness and check that all your electricals are working as they should be. Check the operation of your indicators, your hazard warning lights, your tail light, and both your brake lights to make sure that everything works properly and give the wires a bit of a jiggle around just to make sure that all the connections are reliable. 
then you can proceed to the final sort of phase of fitting. Now in preparation for fitting the main sort of mudguard plate and that guard that protects the seat lock, there are a few bits that need to be removed from the bike, starting with the forward left hand side grab rail bolt. This can be a little bit of a pain to remove because there's a lot of tension on the bolt from the grab rails, so removing it just takes a little bit of patience. Once that's done, there are two bolts that go into the back of the air box. These need to be removed, and behind them, there are two top hat spacers. Now, the instructions tell you to remove these as well. In actual fact, you need them to remain where they are, but as soon as you remove that bolt, they'll just fall out. Now, I would advise that you put them straight back in, and to save yourself some cursing and swearing, put a big blob of grease on the flange at the back of each one, use that as a temporary adhesive to effectively stick them back in the hole so that they'll stay put while you go through the installation. Now below those two bolts there is also a square piece of rubber. This needs to be removed, it simply pulls out, you won't be using it again so put it somewhere safe. Once you've done that it's time to offer up your main mudguard plate and using one of the original bolts while holding the plate in place over the holes where those top hat spaces are, fastening the right hand bolt with the appropriate washer and screw it up hand tight so that it holds the plate in place. Then take your lock guard and the original bolt for the grab rail, put the guard in place and replace the grab rail bolt. Everything should line up okay, you can then go ahead and replace the left hand bolt into the top hat spacer and this should hold everything in place ready for the next stage. Now moving to the tail end of the plate, line up the two holes at the tail end of the plate with the two threaded holes in the number plate bracket. Fasten that up and you're almost finished, there are just two more bolts to put in. Now in your kit you'll find two black aluminium spacers and they're narrower at one end than they are at the other. What you need to do is insert these between the mudguard plate and the securing frame bracket with the narrow end facing up and then insert a bolt from underneath up through the spacer and through the bracket. Then with aid of the prescribed bolts and washers you're free to fasten it down and when that's done that represents the final part of this assembly. Have a look at the tail tardy now from all directions. Make sure that everything's lined up and everything is straight and then gradually go around each and every fastener and tighten them up. Now remember, if in doubt at any time, consult RNG's instructions and pay special attention to what size bolts, washers and nuts they're prescribed for each part of this installation. When you've got everything tightened up, it's time to secure all your wiring and make it safe for use on the road. Now it's difficult to judge an accessory like this, especially when you consider its prime directive was that it shouldn't be seen. In that respect it hits the mark, it does the job. That modern looking clear tail light shouldn't fit with this bike but somehow it just does and especially with the Triumph LED indicators it just looks right. The fit and finish is perfect and RNG Racing's experience in this field of motorcycle accessories really shines through. And ease of fitment, it's got to score a 10 out of 10. The finish is flawless and it's easy to see why this is one of the more expensive tail tardies on the market. RNG quote about a one hour fitting time for this product. To be honest, I think that's a little bit optimistic for your average owner who's coming in to fit this cold without any knowledge of the actual product itself. Now when you add to these factors the fact that this tail tardy still allows you to keep your grab rail and if you want your back rack, I can't think of another product on the market at the moment that comes anywhere near it. The back rack and the grab rail in reality can be removed or replaced within a couple of minutes, it's just four bolts. So if you want to go for the full strip back look, you can still have that and just fit either of those accessories as and when you need them. I'll leave a link for this tail tardy to RNG's website. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful. I'll be back next Friday just before the new year with a video as usual. 
and I would like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Have a good one, ride safely, and I'll see you next week.